Since when has impossible ever stopped you? That's it, last time I want to see that. Hey, that's what you can do to the devil when you go out today, right? Just smash him straight on his head and tell him he can't come back anymore. Amen. God, oh, okay. I'm not joking. Anyway, drug addict, 16 years, five and a half years in jail, in and out of jail. Uh, lost our son, Colin. Uh, when he was six months old, I lost him to DCFS custody uh, because of all my addiction stuff. Um, I had, when I came to the end of my road, I had warrants in, in three states and in 12 counties. Uh, and and I, I was a bad boy. I had task force looking for me. I got power with a felony uh, counterfeit money charge was the was finally what did me in. I was counterfeiting hundred dollar bills, and they caught me in the printer and the and the whole nine yards. And so that was that was a crazy story uh, going going through that life. But um, but anyway, that was that was my life for sixteen years. And um, in two thousand and thirteen, I was in Branson, Missouri. I'm giving you the real short version, of course, because I don't want to take much more time. We need to get moving, but. Um, I, I was in Branson, Missouri, and I'd been homeless for about three months at that point, and I had all the warrants, and cops were looking for me. And, uh, anyway, I was in an ice storm in Branson, Missouri, and uh, it was the worst one they've had since then, and I think the worst one they've had since then. Before then, and the worst one since they've had since then. You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyway, so they, um, I was out in the middle of that, walking around. I fell on my face, and, and I was just kind of over it. Um, I, I finally had come to the end of the road, um, and I, my intention was to lay there and die and freeze, and they'd find me in the morning. That's just that's where I was at. I was over it. Um, I uh, did not, though. God had a different plan. He uh, First time I ever heard him talk to me, and he, said, he just said, get up. Uh, and I heard him just like clear as a bell. He just said, get up. And I kind of raised myself up. And, and I said, uh, I, my response to that was, I don't know how you think you're going to fix me. And, uh, and he said, I just need you to trust me. And, uh, and so I said, I would. And uh, there's a lot happened that night. The next morning, a cop car pulled in the parking lot. It's the second time I ever heard him talk to me. And he said, are you ready? Mm -hmm. uh, and I knew what he meant. And I said, yep. And I walked up to the cop car and I found the window. And I said, my name's Dustin Brown. I got warrants all over the place. Task Force is looking for me. And I'm over. It's done. And here I am. And so they ran my uh, identification, found out I was telling the truth. I don't know who would lie about that. You know? so, uh, hey! I mean, I guess I'm really homeless, you know. They don't want to go there. I don't know. But, uh, I, but I did it. it, it, it all, you know, they took me to jail. So that time I went to jail for seven and a half months. And uh, while I was in there, I just devoured the Word of God. I got filled with the Holy Ghost in my jail cell all by myself. Uh, I don't do the whole religion thing. I don't care if you're Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, Lutheran. I don't care what you are. None of it's in the Bible. So uh, the only thing that's in the Bible is Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and that's it. And, uh, and so whatever sign you brought in here, it doesn't matter today, okay? Uh, and, and so it didn't matter in my jail cell, that's for sure. There wasn't no signs up there except for Taney County Jail. That's the only sign that was hanging in that, in that place. And uh, I was in my jail cell by myself, and uh, I was praying with my whole heart, and I was crying. And I remember I got filled with the Holy Spirit for the first time, and I started praying in tongues, and I covered my mouth. <laughs> I'm serious. I covered my mouth. I'm like, what was that? Because right? it just kind of came and freaked me out, right? And uh, and, and I'm not going to go into a lesson on tongues. Don't worry about it. I'm not. I'm just telling you my story. Um, and so I, I covered my mouth and I let go and I started praying again and I was crying again and then I started praying in tongues again. I filled my pulled my mouth again and I was like, man, what in the world is going on? And the enemy came right into my ear. And I'm just saying this because it's important. The enemy came right up into my ear and he said, you're just showing off. That's not real. You're just showing off. And then the love of the Father and God came right behind the enemy and he got in my other ear and he went, you're in here by yourself. Hmm. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm serious. And it was that moment I was like, oh, this is real. Something's happening. Well, something just happened. I don't know what happened, but something happened. Because I'm talking funny, right? And so, listen, I believe, I'll tell you, I tell it all over the place. I believe you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and there's lots of evidences of being filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues ain't the only one, okay? So, I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you that's what happened to me. So, let me clear all that up, okay? So, anyway, um, I at that moment, I ate the Word of God, and I just ate it, and ate it, and ate it, and ate it, and it changed me. Um, I got out of jail. I went into a year-long discipleship and accountability program. I graduated that program. I had a warrant in Illinois. Uh, I went back to Illinois, and uh, after I graduated that program, I drove up to Illinois, and I turned myself into the judge, and I said, hey, I had a warrant, a uh, $200,000 felony at Scottie Court, and uh, I've been in a program. I got my life together, and uh, this is the only thing in my way, and, I, and I'm here to squash it, so send me to prison or do whatever you need to do, but I'm, I, I, want it off my, I want it out of my way. And uh, I ended up getting put on a year-long drug court program instead of going to prison because God still had another plan. Um, and during the course of that year, um, God started developing a bunch of relationships and, uh, in the court system because I was in the court system, right? So I was meeting probation officers and attorneys and, and, and so on and so forth, judges. About halfway through that thing, I heard God call me 
uh, and tell me that he wanted me to start a discipleship and accountability program, um, what I had freely been given, it was time um, for me to freely give away. Uh, and so I did that, and uh, Jesus House Restoration Ministry started, and then I'm going to fast forward past a lot of that. Uh, I met my wife. Uh, we've been married for almost three years in June. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. At the exact same time, he called, um, he called us to pastor a church. Uh, so I said yes for sure to her, and I argued about the pastor thing. <laughs> so I was like, eh, about that hurt? You got it, no problem. Uh, eh, I don't know about the pastor thing. Uh, I said yes to both, though. We said yes to both. And so we got married, and then we began to pastor a church. Um, what's funny about that is the way that God called us to pastor a church was he, this is the scripture that he used, is he said, what do I have to do with a building made with hands? That's all he said to me. And I knew when he said that, that, that he was asking me to pastor a church. I just knew that in my spirit. But that's what he said to me. Um, and so after he did that, uh, I, I, again, I said yes. And we have traveled. We've never owned a building. We've never spent $1 on a parking lot or a floor or a, or a roof or, a, or a, 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 a any of that. We've never spent any, any money that God's brought in. We've never spent on building a building. We've always put it in the street. And that's just something that we've always done. Um, so not long ago, eight months ago, you might think we've been doing this for a while. It's only been eight months, just so you know. So give me some grace if I mess something up. Uh, we've only been doing this for eight months. Uh, we, I was reading through the parable of the great banquet. I've read that a hundred times and preached it a lot of times. Uh, but that day I read it in Luke 14, 21. It's on the back of our shirts. Um, it just stood out and lifted off the page. And it said, go into the streets quickly and bring in the lame, the blind, and the halt so that my house may be filled. I read that and it said it did something to me. Um, God said prophetically after that, he said, uh, you've passed from one season to the next. I've sent out the invitations and they've been denied. I, I want you to understand that was a very prophetic word and it's why all of you are here today. Okay? Because that word said, God said, I sent out the invitations and they've been denied. We've moved into the next season. It's time to go in the street. Okay. <laughs> Do what you want with that, but you're all here. By the way, I counted you. There's 80 plus kids here. 80 adults plus children here. Amen. Dale Miller. Amen. <laughs> I got to say it. So I'm talking to Dale, right? And he's like, what if only nine people show up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why nine was the number. I, I just, I just, <laughs> He didn't say 10, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's nine? You know, I don't know. If nine people show up, we're going to find one more and make it 10. That's what we're going to do. He said, what if nine people show up? I said, we're coming anyway, dude. Yeah. Amen. I don't care how many people say it ain't about that. Yeah. It's about changing the city, and it only Amen. takes 12. You ever read the Bible? Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Thank you. So I guess we'd have to get three more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So we, uh, I read it that day, and God said, hey, it's time to go to the street. I said, okay. We said, yes. We just started going out in the street in our own community. That's how this whole thing started. And we just said yes. And there was 11 or 12 or 13 of us at the first street reach. Uh, most of them were at the first street reach that are here today uh, that, that have now turned into a traveling team with us. And, and they, got, they got sold out for it. They went out in the street. God wrecked them. And they're like, there's just nothing like this. And I, I got to do it wherever you guys are doing it. Uh, Sister Lisa lives in North Carolina, by the way. And she flies in or drives in. You don't want me to tell them that? She flies in or drives into these street reaches and she lives in North Carolina. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. That's what hey. She's mad at me now. She don't like attention at all. Hey, no, but listen, I'm gonna tell you something. That's what that's what God's doing in people. You don't even know. That's why you're here, but you will know. Like, we're not going to sit in this building and talk the whole time. We are going to be in the street, okay? Uh, but, I, but, but everything that's happened today happens for a reason. It's all, it's all for a reason. It's all very pointed. It's all very purposeful. And whether you know it or not, the Holy Spirit's using every aspect of this to begin to do a work in you. You're already changed. Yeah. You're already different than the way that you were when you Woo! came in here. Oh, You've already yeah. experienced things that inside of you that you haven't experienced yet. And maybe it was a long time ago. Maybe it's you being restored to your first love. That's good. I'm not saying none of you've been here ever haven't seen you. I, I, I'm just saying that maybe it's just God bringing you back to what to the beginning. That's good. Thank you. Right. So um, we said yes. We did it in the in the in the street in our neighborhood, um, and man, it, we got we literally got set on fire. We're like, this is just crazy cool, right? We're like, well, I don't want to be in the building. So I had to go back and pastor in the building, and I was like, I don't even want to be in here. And God was like, Oh, I heard that. <laughs> So um, in that obedience, we were obedient to what God told us to do. In that obedience, God blew on it, uh, literally. And, uh, and I don't even know what happened, and now we're in Paris, Tennessee, talking to you. Yeah. And uh, we, were in, we were in Matt 
here in Illinois uh, last weekend, and we're in Trenton, Missouri, two weeks from now. And on April 9th, we're in Kansas City, Missouri, and then on April 30th, we're in Windsor, Missouri, and then in, in May, we're in Ohio, I think, and then we're like, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know. We just keep saying yes. Hey, just keep saying yes. Just keep saying yes. And I don't care how old you are or how young you are. I'll say old. He said wise, I'm going to say old. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. Okay? It doesn't really matter because God, he said, behold, will I not? I'm doing a new thing. Will I not spring forth? Will it not spring forth? Will I not bring it to pass? If I bring it to labor, will I not deliver it? I don't care how long you've been doing this. God's doing something new in you. And if you'll say yes, he's going to do something. He's going to renew you. He's going to renew you. He's going to renew you. Fountains of youth. <laughs> really, there is a family of youth. It's called the Holy Ghost because of all the whole. And it, it said the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. Yes. Now you tell me I'm not saying Bible. I'm gonna tell you you're wrong because that's what it says. That's right. And there's a refreshing. Yeah. Thank you. Lord. There's a refreshing. Thank you, Lord. So um, that's how we got here, and that's why all of you are here today. Um, we got in contact with the Encounter Ministry. For all of you that know what that is, uh, we talked to the leadership in Encounter Ministry. They're teaching a course, uh, the book work on a course that is called uh, the Ecclesia uh, Accelerator Course, and, uh, and, and I wasn't doing it. And then um, we went, and they said, this is what the Accelerator Course is like. And I said, this is what we're doing. And Jeff Brawley said, it's the same exact thing. And I said, awesome. And he said, well... Makes sense that we bring this thing together, man. And I said, yep. Uh, so we did. We launched it through Encounter Ministry, and then and, and it's just been one thing after the other, and we've just, been, we've just been off to the races. So I wanted to give you a little bit of my story. I've never told my testimony at a street reach before. God told me I needed to start telling you. Uh, and so you're the first one to hear it at a street reach, because I, and I'm just being obedient to that. I think it's important for you to know that God doesn't qualify, call the qualified, and qualifies the call. That's right. Right? And it doesn't matter how much garbage and junk you got, whether it's religion or whether it's drugs. It doesn't matter. God will go right past through all of that stuff, and he'll fill you with his Holy Ghost, and he'll use you as a vessel, and you'll work till you see him. I promise you that. I'll work till I see him, man. I'm going to work till I see his face. I ain't never going to quit. I don't care how many times I want to. I ain't never going to. And the enemy knows it, and he hates me, and I don't care. And after days, he's going to hate you even more than he already does now. <laughs> well, you didn't know he was at war? <laughs> Wake up. Read Revelation to tell you the, the, the dragon is wroth with you. But after you go out and you knock on the door and somebody breaks down and gets free from his grip, yeah. well, we're going to be more wroth with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you know what you can do when he comes around? You put him right up underneath your feet and crush serpents. Yeah. They say, I'll give you the power and authority to crush serpents. Step on her head, just, only, just crush them. Yeah. He's a punk and he's with you. I heard somebody say one time, the devil got whipped with two sticks. <laughs> it's true. It's true, ain't it? Jesus whooped the devil, took two sticks, and he whooped him. He whooped him. He got all, all, all the keys and the authority of hell, death, and the grave being given to him. And, and guess what? If, you, if you're a true follower of Jesus Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit, only you and him know that. But if you are, if you truly are filled with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. then you've got the keys in your hand, too. And you can walk straight up in the gates of hell. They won't prevail against you. And you'll walk straight out the front door with everybody in it if you want to. Yeah. Wow. That's good. Wow. We do it all the time. Yeah. And it's hot. <laughs> we feel the heat. But guess what? <clears throat> We're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah, right. Enter into the joy of the Lord, and you're going to too. Amen? Amen? Okay, so I'm going to skip a lot because it's almost 2 o'clock. It, well, it's 1.40. And, uh, and I want to make sure we are in teams and loading up. So I'm going to skip a lot of what I would normally say, and we're going to go straight into an equipping. Okay? Amen? Amen. So we're, we're going to equip you. So there's three things. I don't even need my notes at this point. Hallelujah. So there's three things. Um... That you need to understand about Jesus and you need to understand about you if Jesus lives in you, okay? So when Jesus was on earth, he operated in three different offices, okay? Some of you probably know this, right? For all of you that are, as Brother Joe said, wiser than me, uh, you may know this from a long time ago. But like I said, um, this may just be a refreshing and a renewal to you, okay? It might not be, you might not be hearing nothing you haven't already heard before, but maybe it's just God using this to return you back to your first love and put that first love fire in you. 
But I, I don't know about anything. You do anything for 40 or 50 years, you're going to get kind of tired of it after a while, maybe, right? And you might just need a refreshing. It's okay. It's all right, okay? But there's some of you in here that may have never heard this teaching before. And either way, um, it doesn't matter. It's going to equip you for the work of the ministry because that's what the Bible says. Equip the saints for the work of the ministry, right? Amen. Amen. So that's what we're going to do. So he operated in three offices, okay? First office, everybody's really familiar with, would be a, a priest, right? Because he made intercession between God and man, right? So everybody knows Jesus was a priest, right? Okay, not the Catholic kind. If you're Catholic in here, I, I offend you, I'm sorry. Woe to the man the offense comes by, right? But it's impossible that offenses will not come. Anybody here Catholic? Huh? Give it up for a list. Oh, yeah. Give it up for a list. <laughs> no, whoever was it wrong now. I'm just kidding. All right, so <clears throat> listen, Jesus loves you too. Uh, he loves all of us, okay? So it doesn't matter, that's the point. It doesn't matter. What he did do is he operated as a priest, okay? And so um, this is what priestly ministry looks like. I'm going to give you an example. Ready? Okay? What's wrong? With, what's wrong? Hey, I, I'll get, I'm just going to role play for a little bit. You guys ready? You want to get into role play, see what it looks like when you're at the door? You just want to do that? Amen. I'm trying to cater to your every need. <laughs> You always get stuck being the guy at work on because you sit in the front seat. <laughs> She's like, what do you mean? There's three other people on the front seat. I'm married to her. I'm not messing with her, okay? Matt here. Matt here. You're his wife. I'm not messing with you either. I'm messing with him, though. Okay, so listen. So if you're not going to do it, let's say your, knee, your, knee, your knee's hurt. Your knee's hurt, okay? Is your knee hurt right now? Yes, your knee is actually hurt? No. Oh. Your back is hurt? Great, come on up. Just come on up here. Amen. We'll just use a real life example. Hallelujah. Raise your hand if you've ever had a back problem in here. Woo! Raise your hand if you've ever been healed from a back problem in here. You had a back problem, pray Jesus got healed. Raise your hand. Come up here if you have. Oh, come on. Amen. Yeah, here we go. Come on. I'm not asking all your names. I'm not going to remember in one minute anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Okay. You know what my name is? Great. Where you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so he's got a real life back problem going on right now, okay? You guys got it? Okay, this isn't role play because his back's actually hurting. All right, here we go. Okay, so there's a priestly way that you can do this, right? So Jesus, as a priest in you, would operate like this. And I'm going to do that first, okay? So and then we're all going to practice what, what, we're, what we need to be doing, which is the kingly office. And that's going to be the third one. And that's going to be the last one we talked about. And that's going to be the one that you're probably the most unfamiliar with, okay? So as a priest... I'm going to pray for you, and it's going to sound like this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for Pastor Barrett right now, and I just pray that you would just come and you would just touch his back. I pray, Lord, that the anointing would come, and I pray, Father God, that the healing virtue from heaven would come and touch her, and that you would just touch his back right now, and that it be healed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Your back feeling better? Well, okay. All right, good. Amen. So you said my back feels a little bit better. Amen. He's a pastor, he ain't lying to you. His back is a little bit better, okay? <laughs> I didn't pay him nothing. Practice the truth. Okay. All right, so priestly office, right? I'm making intercession to God, and I'm, and I'm bringing Pastor Eric into the throne room, and I'm standing between God and Pastor Eric, and I'm asking for something to happen. Okay? That's a, that, just by the way, you're in the church called Bridge of Hope, right? Yeah. And if you don't know, the word priest means bridge, right? Yeah. And so that sign out there on that hallway says, Be the Bridge. Oh, All right, it says that out there on the hallway, okay? Be the bridge. In other words, it could have said, be the priest. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Amen. Got it? Okay, Amen. now, that's a prayer that we're going to do in the church among saints. So it wouldn't surprise me if I prayed that prayer you're actually in your back out here, okay? That's something that you're going to operate in within the church. The priestly office works just fine. Okay, that, I'm not doing nothing wrong with that. If you pray that way today when you go out to the door, nobody's going to hit you with lightning bolts, okay? It's okay. You're going to forget everything I say today. And I would say, as soon as the door opens up, you're going to go, <laughs> <laughs> And I don't know where we're going, but, but, but if, I, if we're going where I think we're going to go, they're going to be like, what you want? <laughs> and you're going to be like, I forgot. <laughs> You guys will get that. You'll be like, here's some food. You can get that done. Okay. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute, there's more? <laughs> yes. Okay, so priestly office inside the church using the gifts of healing. Listen, I told you, I'm not going to tell you anything's not Bible, okay? So that, th th this, this works very effectively within the body of Christ. 
priestly office. You guys got it? You guys got it? Okay, awesome. So raise your hand if you've ever pre prayed for somebody in the priestly office before. You've used the priest. Probably should be everybody in here if you've ever prayed for anybody. Probably did. Priestly office, right? Father God, I lift up Bob Smith to you, right? Okay, you're, you're, act, you're, act, you're, you're activating and operating in the priestly office. Okay, the second office of Christ Jesus was that of a prophet. Did ever, does everybody in here know Jesus was a prophet? I hope so, because he talked about his own death all the time, right? Yeah, he prophesied lots of stuff, okay? So, he was a prophet, okay? So, a prophetic office would be the second thing that we would use to pray. And probably, most or some of you for sure, are, are familiar with the prophetic office. Probably, the prophetic office gets abused more than any other office. Okay, it's true. Okay? And I'll tell you why. Because the enemy comes in with pride and likes to feign that pride in that prophetic yeah. office. And then it turns into, no more is it thus said the Lord, but as I said, then I'm going to tell you that he said. But no, that's not really what happened. Okay? And God has a lot to say about that, but that's for another day. All right? So the prophetic office, right, is the second office that operated in. If Jesus lives in you, can you operate in the priestly office? Yes. yes. Sure you can. Can you operate in the prophetic office? Yes. Amen. You sure can, because it's the same spirit, same Lord, one body, right? Come on, Ephesians 4. So Read it, it's on the sleeve, right? Okay, it's one spirit, same spirit, same Lord. Right. Amen. Okay, in you all, in all, you around you, through you, and you got it, right? That's the DAV version of the Bible. That, I, that's now, it doesn't matter. Okay, <laughs> prophetic office, right? I declare in the name of Jesus, back be healed. In the name of Jesus, that this back is going to be healed. I can't even hardly do it right because I don't because I'm not praying that way. But anyway, so in the name of Jesus, I just speak life into this back. I speak healing into this back. I speak right now in the name of Jesus. This body is going to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. And I can come up with all kind of other, other stuff and say all kind of other stuff, okay? So in the name of Jesus, I speak unto this back and I declare healing in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. How's your back feeling now? Feeling better. Feeling better. Amen. Have it. Put your hands together. Okay. Again, prophetic office works great in the church. Okay? That's great. Okay? You come up. Well, I tell you, look, I... I grew up in what was called the Pentecostal church, okay? When, and I grew up, but when I, when I say grew up like born again, then started growing up, right? So my walk with Christ, I, was, I got brought up in what people call the Pentecostal church. Listen, if you believe in the Holy Ghost and he's in you, you are the Pentecostal church, okay? And, and, and so it, it, that, that's Pentecost. That's what it's about. It ain't got nothing to do with the denomination. It's got to do with the day it happened and the church was born. So if you've been filled with the Spirit and you got born again, guess what? That was the day of Pentecost in your own personal life. Yeah, Whatever good. day that was. Yes, that's good. You got it? Yes. Okay, so 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 the so the prophetic office works great, okay, within the church, okay? To a non-believer, uh, it's not it's, it's it will it work? Sure, God can do whatever he wants to. He can heal you. You can walk in a room and God can heal somebody because the kingdom of heaven's within you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen. Okay. So I don't want you to get dogmatic, caught up about this, how you say it, this, how you don't say it, I'm gonna do it wrong and all that stuff. Okay, I'm just I'm just I'm just teaching you the different ways, and I'm gonna tell you that when you're when you're we're going out to reach lost people today. You guys do know that, right? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so these are a lot. We're, we're going out to reach lost people today. I'm going to give you one scripture, and then we're going to get to the kingly office, and then that's the last office, and that's the one that I want you to try to practice today. I'll just say that. That's the one I want you to try to practice today is the kingly office, okay? And so that's the one we neglect, um, and it's the one that we're the most weird about, and it's the, and because it just, it's just, I don't know, it just makes you feel funny for some reason, but, um, but, but it's just because it's, it's, it's not something normal probably to you. Maybe to some of you it is. Maybe to some of you it was. And again, maybe this is just a refreshing. Okay? So, um, uh, the scripture says this. Be a light, set your light upon the hill, that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Okay? Well, the works that he was talking about was healing the sick. Okay? It was casting off devils. Right? If you read the Bible, those are the works Jesus did. Right? Amen. 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 I'm pretty sure Jesus said that not only these works shall you do, but greater works than these shall you do. Yes. Do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> All you wise folks in here, y'all remember he said that a long time ago? Okay. So, I, I'm, again, nothing that's not Bible. Jesus said, I'll tell you the works that I They were all marveling at the works, right? What works? Healing the sick, casting off devils, right? Yeah. And they were marveling at the works, right? And then they said, are you marveling because of that? I'm telling you greater works than these you're going to do. 
You know, like, there's more. There's more than this. This is enough, right? So he, he almost made light of it. I remember, I remember one of my favorite things God, God brought me on to, I don't know, about a month ago, casting off devils. And this works the same way when you're dealing with the demonic, by the way, okay? Dealing with the demonic, the priestly office ain't going to work, and neither is the prophetic. It's not going to work, okay? The only one that's going to work with the demonic is walking in the authority of the kingdom of God and walking in, in, in a kingly office, okay? That's the only one that's going to work, I'm going to tell you right now. But God, God showed me this, okay, uh, about the casting off devils, and really it's the same with, with healing, but he said this. They, he, uh, uh, they, all the disciples ran back to him, and they were all, oh, the demons tremble at your name, you know, right? And we got all the power on the devil, and they were making a big deal about it. And, and Jesus, kind of sarcastically, now that I know why he said it, he was sarcastic. And he looked at him and he goes, I saw, I saw Satan fall from heaven. Don't rejoice because the demons are subject to you. Rejoice because your name's literally written down the land's book of life. Yeah. And, and I never knew what he meant by that until about a month ago. And I realized he was actually being quite sarcastic. And he was saying, of course they are subject to you. I was there when, when he got cast out of heaven. Of course they're subject to you. He's been, he's been cast out of heaven, right? And so I'm saying all that to say this. It, the, the, the kingly office, right, is almost Jesus saying, of course they, they're going to be subject to you. Of course that body part's going to get healed. Of course that person that's sick is going to be healed. Of course that demonic is going to, flirt, is going to flee and they're going to be free. Of course that's going to happen because I was there when Satan got cast out of heaven. Listen, I'm doing all of these things so that they'll know that their sins are forgiven. And my will is that none should perish, but that all come to repentance. And it's the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. So, when they've done absolutely nothing at all, and your back gets healed for absolutely no reason, up because you've been running around living in sin, and I heal your back anyway, you're going to know how good I am. And the goodness of that is going to bring you to repentance. And I'm going to get all the glory for it, because men are going to see the good works. And then, see, that opens up the door for you to preach the gospel. Yeah. And that's the third thing, right, he said, dude, is preach the kingdom. So when somebody like yourself has a backache, right, and you go, and you go, man, my back's been here. Oh, you got a backache? Okay, awesome. Uh, how long has it been like that, man? My back's been jacked up for, you know, two years, you know, or whatever. And you're like, awesome. Like, so I'm going to go ahead and pray for that. And then in the kingly office, you do that, and you tell them to start moving around, and they're like, holy crap, my back's healed. And then your answer immediately is, it's by the name of Jesus of Nazareth that you stand here hold today. Repent, Woo! confess your sin, and make him the Lord yes. of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Now you just preach the kingdom. Yeah. You didn't preach church. And you didn't preach salvation. You preached the kingdom. Got it? Amen. To the guy that wasn't going to listen to you preach the kingdom until his back got healed. Mm -hmm. you, get, you get where we're going? Okay, so we want to make it all about the healing, and that's weird and wonky. No, it's not. God told us to do it and equipped us to do it so that when men see it, they'll get God and get the glory for it. And the reason why he's doing it in the first place is so they'll know that he has the power to forgive sin on earth. Right? And that they can be free. Amen? Because he loves them. Right? So the kingly office is a command. You ever seen a king ask anybody if they could do anything? No. Hold on a second. Before I make this command, I must consult with people. <laughs> nope. Kings don't do that. Kings also don't do this. I'm going to write it down on a piece of paper and see if it happens. <laughs> That'd be perfect. All right? I'm going to write it down. I'm going to speak it, and then we're going to wait and see what happens. Nope. Kings don't do that either. What kings do is they issue commands, and it's a done deal because I'm the king. And I don't care if you like it or not or agree with me or whatever. I'm the king, and once I say it, it's done. Right? Because I'm the king. Okay? Jesus operated in the kingly office. You guys do know that, right? You do know that Jesus <coughs> is the king of the world, right? And everything in it and made it and it was all created by him and for him for his good pleasure and everything that was created was created through him and all that. You got all that, right? Got that part? Okay, awesome. So he was a king too, okay? And uh, it was also an earthly king because they traced it back to the line of David. They did that on purpose. For all of you to skip the genealogies, they're really important. Okay. Anyway, so they traced it back to David just so he could be established on earth. And then obviously he's the, the king of heaven and all the glory. Okay. So a kingly office is real simple. It's the most simple one, actually. Back be healed in the name of Jesus. Pain go right now in Jesus' name. That's right. Muscles come back together right now in Jesus' name. This slide into the spot you're supposed to be in right now in Jesus' name. Yes. Yeah. Well, I just felt that move. Thank you, Lord. Pain leave his body right now. Go. Yes. Swelling decrease right now in the name of Jesus. 
Tissue be restored. Blood vessels and cells be restored right now in Jesus' name. Back, I command you to be all the way healed. It is finished. All the way healed. It's finished. No pain. You can't stay here anymore. You have to go right now. Back pain, you have to go right now. Muscle yeah. pain, you have to go right now. Nerve damage, you have to go right now. Disc displacure, you have to go right now in the name of Jesus. Herniated disc, I command you to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So just begin to bend now. How's your back feel now? Feel better? Feels better? 10%, 50, 100%, not 130, 80, 65. I still feel like the tingling going down my legs. Okay, which leg? Both, both legs. Now we're down the leg. I'm gonna tell you what's happening is running out of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna come up here and command it to get out of his legs. Oh man. Yeah, come on, command it out of his other leg. Tell it to go, like a dog, tell it to sit. Get out, get out of here. In the name of Jesus, please, you do not belong here. You have no part of you. Yes! Yeah. 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 Get his other leg over there. Keep moving that leg around, Pastor. Yeah. Check that leg out there.
So today when you walk up into somebody's house, by the way, this is the last of the equipping and then we're going to go. Well, you're only going to be in the street for about an hour and a half. Or, like, th th this is all so important because after this is over and the day's over, okay, and, 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 we come, and, and you go on about your business, this isn't for us talking to Dale. This isn't about an event on Saturday, March, whatever today this is. All right. All right? And, and then we go do this, right. and then we all go back to what we were doing before. We all wasted a bunch of time, and I've wasted a lot of gas money. Right. You understand what I'm saying? This isn't about an event. God ain't doing events. God don't want an event. He wants to move in this city. It's a move. Yeah. We're only going where God's moving at. I care less about an event. Okay? And God don't care about an event. Who cares that you're going to rent Kansas City Stadium and put 80,000 people? I don't what are you going to do after that? Who cares? Who cares about an event? We've been doing an event every Sunday. It's called church. And God's like, well, I sure wish y'all stop doing that so I can move. <laughs> Literally. You know how big God is? He big. And we try to put him in these four walls, and then he's like, man, it's cramped in here. <laughs> wish I could move. Look, this ain't an event, okay? We want you to be equipped. We want you to be equipped and walk in a boldness for the rest of your life. So when you go in, out today and you get in front of people and you go into their house, okay, all you got to do is walk in their house and go, oh, in Jesus' name. Oh, man. And everything in that house has to matter. I don't know if you can picture that in your mind, but can you imagine? Can you imagine just walking, walking today? You just say the name of Jesus. That scripture says about the mention of His name. Just mention it. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Jesus. <laughs> by the way, Jesus. <laughs> it's a mention of His name. Not to mention it, Jesus. It's a mention of His name. Everything on earth is back. So I don't know if you understand what that looks like. You're gonna walk into the darkness today. You're gonna walk into somebody's house. You're gonna say the name of Jesus, and everything in that house will hit His face. Okay, I just want you to understand what's really happening when you're walking into somebody's house and you're saying, gee, everything in there is hitting its face. Yeah. Sickness is hitting its face. The demonic's hitting its face. Everything's hitting its face. Everything's going to die. <clears throat> so we, um, it's cold outside. That's awesome because it's going to be easier to get into people's house. You do not want this to turn into a knock on the door. <laughs> By the way, I did door-to-door -door sales my whole life. Can you believe it? And then God was like, yeah, you didn't know. Boy, if I was training you. Oh, <laughs> when you get up to somebody's house today, you don't want to just be like, hey, we're handing out food. Listen, by the way, this ain't the Bridge of Hope's church's name. And this ain't whatever church you go to's name. I don't, uh, there's more. There's multiple churches in here. By the way, praise God. Put your hands together for yeah. multiple. Yeah. Churches. yeah. Hey, I said this for a long time ago. I said, man, if you get all that, you get a bunch of pastors in the same room together, it's got to be a move of God. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Woo. Amen. That's good. true. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's true. Yeah. Woo. Y'all be good. It's true. Yeah. It's got to be a move of God when pastors start coming together and working towards the same goal. Yeah. Man. He pastored this church in the 70s, right? Yeah. I, I wanted to say something. Go ahead. Uh, years ago, uh, my wife and I have always had a, a burden to go out door to door and reach people. Mm. Uh, one day, years ago, uh, my friend came here to Paris when we lived here. And uh, I told him, I said, Gary, we're going to go out door to door. Well, that day, it rained cats and all the dogs. And I didn't say, tell anybody, but I said, praise the Lord. It's raining. Yeah. But I knew for years we needed to go out. So my wife and I were pastoring in Delaware. And we decided we were, she and I were going to go out and knock on doors and share Jesus. The very first door we went to, the man said, my wife will remember, the man said, come on in. He said, uh, can we just kneel here and pray? Mm -hmm. I want to ask Jesus into my heart. Before our heart even Come on. God is going before us. Yes. Yes. We're going to see victory. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's, it's so cool that he's here. <laughs> Man, God is trying to encourage you. I don't. I mean, I. I, I, I look. I do, I'll give you a hint. We don't ever know what it's going to look like when we show up. 
I heard him, we just go. We got here last night and started unhauling boxes, driving past her and Dale, and a couple other people was here. <laughs> we started unhauling all the food and packing it up, you know. We moved right into this deliverance, really, session, really is what it was, a deliverance session for, I don't know, two hours when we were in here. And, and uh, we started talking, and, and Pastor was just like, man, I, was, I thought we were unloading food. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell you to turn it into, you know, turn it into this. We don't ever know what it's going to look like. We were in here, sitting right here for a couple hours last night. People, man, getting healed and release came. And, man, it was just, oh, man, intercession. Got done with a young lady in the back. She was able to forgive her aunt. And everything. I mean, it was all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff got done uh, last night. And, and listen, this place has been prayed over and 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 prayed over. We've been praying for this place. It's been walked around. It's been prayed over in the street. It's been prayed for at the courthouse. There's been stakes driven in the ground, right? Yeah. Where are you at? There's been stakes driven in the ground in the corners and every gate in this city. Uh, and, and, pro and prophetically, uh, the truth of the gospel and, and, uh, has been released over this city for the past two, three weeks, prepared for this, and then so cool that God brought snow in because He said, Though your, skin, your sins be scarlet, I'll make them white as snow. And here's what's crazy, and I said this to our team this morning it was literally 51, 52, 51, 52, and then it snowed today. And then tomorrow it's 51, 52, 51. Right? Everything that happens in the spiritual manifests in the physical. God's already came in here and cleansed the city. When you yeah. show up today, you're going to see things like that happen, Pastor. Yeah. You're going to walk yeah. up and be like, oh my gosh, I was just in the middle of it. Fill in the light, you know what I mean? Right? I'm, I'm telling you, he's already gone before you. Yeah. All you have to do is show up. The last thing, and then we're going to try to do teams. We've got 80 people here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the second largest street route you've ever done. Chilla Coffee held the title at about 75, 70, 80. It's real close. So uh, this is, there's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, you're going to have more than 10 teams. Just so you have eight. You can't put eight people in a car. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Lord. You want to get in the house. You want to get in the house. I keep trying to get that out of my mouth. You want to get in the house. You don't want to turn this into a front porch conversation. Okay. You're going to get in the house. You're on, listen, we only brought enough food for 100 bags. Like, which is, I mean, that's a lot of food. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, that's a lot of bags. Okay. So, you're, you're going to have about five or six encounters probably is what it's looking like today. So take advantage of them. Do not show up to that house and be like, we're just here to give you a bag of food in Jesus' name. Can we pray for you? I mean, you can do that, and, 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 they're, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to shut their door behind them, and they're going to stand out on that threshold, and then this is what they're going to say to you. Ready? I'm pretty good right now. Yeah. They're going to say, what church are you with? What's your answer going to be? We are the church. We, that's exactly right. We are the church. We're just out here in Jesus' name. It's a bunch of churches. Hey, listen, when you tell unbelievers that the church has come together in Jesus' name and we're at your door, mm. oh, man. you want to know why people don't come to church? Because they think you're all hypocrites. No. I, it's the truth. You want to know what? They're right about them. A lot of us. That's why they won't come to church. And, and, you, know what, and you know one of the first things they'll say? is be like, God's trying to tell me I'm supposed to follow you because y'all can't even get along. Why in the world would I want to follow Jesus and y'all can't even meet in the same building together? Mm. I can get all my drug addict friends and we can meet together just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's true. So when you tell them we're not, man, we got a bunch of churches from the area. We're just out here in Jesus' name, man. Just that alone. They're going to be like, what? We were in St. Genevieve, Missouri, and we are mobbing in this, I call it mobbing, I probably didn't change my terminology, but I like using that word. We're just mobbing out into this, into this uh, apartment complex, and this young kid comes out, and we start talking about salvation on the, on the corner, and he, turn, and he stops in the middle of it, and he turns around, and he looks, and he goes, what are all these people doing here? And I said, man, it's the church, man, out here in the name of Jesus. And he's like, I've never seen this many people running through this apartment complex. You want to get in their house, Jesus said this. <clears throat> wherever you go, I'll be with you wherever you go. The sole of your foot trots. You need to put your foot in that house. Yeah. You need to get in that house. And when you go in there, peace be unto this house. Yeah. You know Jesus said, speak that, right? Yeah. Say it. Yeah. He said, speak peace unto this house. 
And if they receive you, let your peace remain. And if they don't receive you, take your peace back. And then dust your sandals off, and that means don't take any offense from that last house with you. It's okay. And just go on to the next one. Okay, it's Bible, guys. I can, we just got away from it somewhere, but that's what it says we're supposed to be doing. Okay? Peace be unto you. You need to walk in that house. You need to get your foot in that living room. Because I'm going to tell you something else will happen. Once you get in the living room, you can start looking around. And just use your eyeball. Use your senses. God gave them to you for a reason, right? And, and use your nose and use your ears and use your eyes and look around and see what they got on the wall. And see what, look, look at the, look at, just look at the order of their house. If it's all disordered and disrupted. And, I mean, you can just look around for a minute and the Holy Spirit's going to start speaking you back there. And then you can start ministering. Right? And have conversations. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's all we're going to get today because we're going to go. Okay? Um, I'm just he has an inch y'all doing the beer here. We're going to go. Yeah, so we're going to split up into teams. So if we would, our travel team, if you would come up, please. Yeah, go ahead. So for people who have never done this before, I just want to encourage you, when you're in that house and somebody's speaking to somebody and ministering to somebody and you hear a word from the Lord, there's a reason for that. Yeah, good. So don't shy away from that. When that person gets done ministering, jump in there and say what God told you to say. Or if there's somebody else there that God says you need to speak to, speak to them. Be bold. God's going to equip you in that situation. He's, yeah. he's going to use your gifts. He's going to show you through his eyes, his ears, his heart. Right? So just be sensitive to that. Be sensitive to the spirit when you're in that house. Since when has impossible ever stopped you?